Good morning. I'm Stefano Francesco Carino, medical doctor at the Digestive Endoscopy Unit of the Pancras Institute at University of Verona. On behalf of my co-authors, I would like to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for the opportunity to discuss our article entitled Association between Macroscopically Visible Tissue Samples and Diagnostic Accuracy of U.S. Guided Through the Needle Microforceps Biopsy of Pancreatic Cystic Lesions that was conducted at the Pancras Institute of Verona. An accurate preoperative differential diagnosis of pancreatic cystic lesion is often required for an appropriate therapeutic management of the patient. US can provide detailed images of the cyst and allows fluid aspiration for biochemical or cytological analysis. However, intracystic CA level is useful in differentiating mucinous and non-mucinous lesions but cannot help in defining the cyst histotype. Moreover, cyst fluid cytology can be inconclusive or difficult for pathological interpretation due to scan cellularity. Therefore, the information commonly obtained by USFNA are often insufficient for an accurate diagnosis. Recently, a microforceps suitable to pass through a 19 gauge needle to perform a cyst wall biopsy has become available. This procedure has been called through the needle biopsy, TTMB. This microforceps works in a similar fashion to standard endoscopic forceps and can be reintroduced several times inside the cyst for the acquisition of several pieces of tissue. Published articles are consistent in reporting an improvement of diagnostic accuracy using these microforceps compared with cytology. However, a higher rate of adverse events have been also observed. The most commonly reported are intracystic bleeding, that is generally self-limiting, and the more worrying acute pancreatitis. We can speculate that the onset of adverse events is related to the sampling traumatism on the cystic wall. In this surgical pathology image, we can see the point where TTMB bite was performed and its traumatic effect on the cystic wall represented by an intraparietal hematoma close to the macroforceps bite. Therefore, reducing the number of passes without losing in diagnostic power, in other words, to assess the minimum number of samples to be collected is of paramount importance. At our institution, since the acquisition of the Moray microforceps, we established with pathologists an internal protocol where the collection of three samples was set as a standard. The TMB was generally employed when EUSFNA was indicated for the presence of risk features. We performed one byte per pass looking at the tenth sign of the cystic wall, and in the absence of intracystic bleeding, the procedure was repeated until three visible samples were obtained. For each TTMB specimen, as well as for cytological smears, we evaluated the diagnostic yield at four levels, capable of differentiating mucinous and non-mucinous cysts, provide cyst line epithelium, define the grade of dysplasia, and provide a specific diagnosis of the cyst histotype. We therefore assessed the diagnostic yield of one, two, or three TTMB samples and compared with cytology. When the first retrieval sample was evaluated, only the possibility to reach a specific diagnosis was significantly improved. Differently, the availability of two samples enhanced all histological categories. Two specimens also increased diagnostic yield compared with one sample, despite a statistical significance was not reached. Finally, in our study, the acquisition of a third sample did not improve the, the value of any histological level. To evaluate the reliability of TTMB diagnosis, we compared TTMB findings with surgical pathology in 20 patients who underwent resection. The concordance rate between TTMB and surgical specimens was 90%. We observed two non-concordant cases where a diagnosis of simple mucinous cyst was done by TTMB, but at surgical pathology these lesions resulted to be 
mucinous cystic neoplasm. The diagnosis of mucinous cystic neoplasm is based on the finding of the ovarian-like stroma in the cystic wall. In these two cases, ovarian-like stroma was not found in TTMB sample, despite its zoological adequacy. I think this result deserve further discussion because it represents probably the major limitation of TTMB. Indeed, TTMB provides focal specimens of the cyst wall. However, the cyst wall is not homogeneous, not only about the presence of ovarian-like stroma, but also for the epithelium grade of dysplasia. For example, this histological image of a resected mucinous cystic neoplasm shows that a large portion of the cyst wall don't have ovarian stroma. Again, in this case, we can see that epithelium dysplasia involves only a small segment of the cystic wall. In conclusion, the standardization of TTMB technique to reach the best diagnostic outcome with the lowest rate of adverse events is crucial in this procedure. Our study demonstrated that at least two visible samples should be retrieved to significantly improve the diagnostic yield in comparison with cytology. The acquisition of their specimen seems to not improve significantly any diagnostic level and could be avoided to reduce the traumatism on the cystic wall and the risk of adverse events. However, future studies should be specifically designed to assess the correlation between the number of TTMB passes and the onset of adverse events, and should also explore the impact of applying prophylaxis utilized to prevent posterior CP pancreatitis. I and all my co-authors thank all of you for watching this video, and I invite you to read our article in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy.